Welcome to Art After Dark. I'm Gladys Ramirez, the Public Programs Manager here at the Norton Museum of Art. Thank you for joining us. Tonight is the premiere of a new series we're hosting this summer in celebration of the Norton's 80th year anniversary. What's the Story invites neighboring cultural and community organizations to mark the occasion by sharing their distinguished histories and what's ahead. Tonight's program takes a look at the history of the Speedy Cultural Heritage Museum, a museum in Delray Beach dedicated to showcasing the contributions of members of the African diaspora to Florida and the US. You're invited to join the conversation too. Leave us a comment, ask questions, and use the live chat features on YouTube and Facebook for our guest speaker to answer after the presentation. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome our speaker for the evening, Charlene Barrington, Executive Director of the Spady Cultural Heritage Museum. Welcome, Charlene. Thank you so much, Gladys, for having me. I'm excited to be here. As Gladys mentioned, my name is Charlene Farrington. I'm the Executive Director of the Spady Cultural Heritage Museum in beautiful downtown Delray. And I'm going to give you a little bit of the history of how this museum got started and the nonprofit organization that made it all happen. Our nonprofit organization is called Expanding and Preserving Our Cultural Heritage, or EPOC for short. Next. EPOC formed on February 6, 1995, when Vera Roll Farrington met with Sam McGee, who was the executive director of the TED Center, David Randolph, who was a city commissioner, and Dorothy Patterson, who was the archivist at the Delray Beach Historical Society. Next. The meeting was held to discuss the limited amount of Black history information that was on file at the Delray Beach Historical Society or anywhere else in Delray Beach. It was also noted that if this information became available, there was very little space at the Delray Beach Historical Society to store it and make it available to the public. Next. At that time, efforts were underway to include historical studies about the Holocaust and African American history in the public school curriculum. Because of the immediate need for this information, it was decided to organize immediately and begin collecting Black history source material and try to get a building for the museum at a later date. Lesson plans about the Black history of Delray Beach were created for the Palm Beach County school system. Next. In February of 1997, the West Settlers Historic District was designated in Delray Beach. It was the first and only historic district in Colored Town, the traditionally Black neighborhood of Delray Beach. In May of 1997, the city of Delray Beach purchased the Spady House located on Northwest Fifth Avenue and the Munnings Cottage located on Northwest Third Avenue from Mr. Douglas Williams. Next. Douglas Williams was the grandson of Susan Williams who lived with her daughter Agnes in the Williams Cottage. Susan Williams was a nurse practitioner who immigrated to Delray Beach from the Bahamas in 1898. Next slide. The cottage is a Bahamian bungalow craftsman style that was built in 1935. The Spady House was built by Solomon David Spady and his wife Jessie in 1926. It is a two-storied Mission Revival style home built in the heart of Colored Town. Next. With many of the newly available amenities afforded to Black people at that time, such as electricity and a telephone. It, next slide. In 1997, Epoch put together a business plan for a Black History Museum called the Spady Cultural Arts Museum and presented it to the Delray Beach City Commission. At the same time, Epoch's board conducted a grassroots fundraising campaign to restore the building. With the help of the state of Florida, Palm Beach County Commissioners, the Delray Beach City Commission, and the Delray Beach Community Redevelopment Agency, 
the Delray Beach Historical Society and others, the building was restored. During the restoration period, the Spady Cultural Arts Museum operated from a temporary site, next slide, and established three important programs. Our annual Martin Luther King Jr. commemorative event, our youth program, and our history bus tours. Next. The museum moved to the newly restored building and opened July 27, 2001. So this year, we celebrate our 20th anniversary. Next. The Spady Cultural Heritage Museum is a Black history museum and cultural center with two objectives, preservation and education. To date, we have, next slide, we have hosted more than 30 different Black history exhibitions at our site and at various other sites in Palm Beach County. Next slide. We host cultural and educational activities and we welcome other nonprofit and for-profit organizations into our site for unique programming of their own. Next. It is our pleasure to be part of the cultural fabric of the state of Florida, Palm Beach County, and Delray Beach. And now I'd like to invite Gladys in to join me again. Next slide. Thank you so much, Charlene. I didn't realize that the Spady had such a storied history and it seems very easy I think contextualized in just a few short slides. But um, can you talk a little bit about kind of um, the community involvement yes. in, in bringing this together? Because obviously a lot of people had to be involved to find the spaces, to yes. get those connections. Dolphin yes. Pins and Spaw says congratulations, by the way. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, it was a uh, it was a real effort in the Delray Beach community and beyond, because there were a lot of people, not just black people, who had an interest in preserving the black history, and there are a lot of people who have that knowledge. There, you, there are so many people who, once we started collecting oral histories, could speak to the uh, settlement of our community and the relationship among the people who moved to Delray in the earliest days and could talk about uh, the Black communities and how they were established. So it was a real grassroots effort, and there were quite a few people who made early on contributions to the effort, and, and still do, actually. Wow, and this is during a time, I think, where um, society was, I think, at odds in terms of race relations, and so the fact that there was kind of like um, across the races, this effort to preserve the history, to memorialize, to create a space for the community to go to. Um, I would love to hear, uh, as you know, we're kind of in the similar fields of work here, some of the work that you're doing with the community, because I know you have connections not only to the African diaspora, but also you have a focus on Caribbean Americans and um, yes. Haitian Americans. So can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit more about those connections with the Spady? Sure, absolutely. So the earliest settlers who were Black people who came to Palm Beach County, really, and Miami-Dade, and let me back up a little bit and say, when, uh, when South Florida was being settled, when people were coming to stay in earnest, Palm Beach County didn't exist yet. So Dade County extended all the way up through Juneau, okay? Right. The earliest population of Black people who came to settle and stay were Bahamians. And mm -hmm. so there were uh, Bahamian people who were here, they were primarily farmers, and um, they helped to establish their earliest neighborhoods. The other larger people group of, of Black people who came to the area to settle and stay, and that not only Black people, but some whites as well, came from the what is now known as the Gullah Geechee coastline. So the coastline of Carolina, Georgia, and North Florida. Mm -hmm. Those people came down and primarily in Delray settled and helped to create communities as well. So we've always had a deep connection and a deep tie with people from the Caribbean, 
and the original um, Africans, West Africans who were brought directly to the US during the enslavement period. That would be the Gullah Geechee um, people. So um, we a lot of the early history of black people in the area are is of people from those two areas. And then of course, early on in the 1960s, there was a large uh, influx of people from uh, Haiti who came into uh, the South Florida area to stay. So um, it, it doesn't really, it is not always described as uh, black people who are from the Caribbean, from Bahamas, from Haiti, but when we talk about our history, we're often talking about those people. Right, right. And can you give us a couple of examples of ways that you were able to kind of highlight these stories, these voices in, in your space? Um, mm -hmm. Is that art exhibitions? Is that community programs? Is that mm -hmm. special events? Yes, all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have a large collection of oral histories. So we have been pulling snippets from those um, audio files to share in our space and online. Uh, we have had uh, ex exhibitions of all kinds and all types from exhibitions on loan from the Smithsonian to exhibitions that have been curated locally, curated in Miami, curated by other uh, art museums, um, and then we have had photo exhibitions. Uh, mm -hmm. One of our first collections was photographs of the old neighborhoods in Delray Beach and where you can see the fine white sugar sand that covers the coastline of Florida, or you would see neighborhoods that were underwater before there was infrastructure. And you know, you would have a hard rain and um, neighborhoods would flood so we have done all kinds of exhibitions and all kinds of programs to share the history that we are saving here in South Florida. And many of our visitors, when they come, they're like from places like Japan or from South America. And when I say history, and then I say the 1800s, they kind of look at me like, Really? <laughs> because the, where they're from, their history dates back centuries. Uh, wow. So then I have to go ahead and explain that Florida at the same time is the oldest uh, uh, community in the United States, as well as the youngest community in the United States, <laughs> because our area wasn't really settled until the Reconstruction period. Okay, so is that tied to the reason why Del Rey Beach was so special um, in connection to your organization? No, it seems Del like Rey it was so special. <laughs> no? Okay. Okay, can you no, talk Del a little Rey bit more about how you guys landed, where you landed then? Well, the, uh, the organizers of the museum uh, saw the need to collect Black history, and it wasn't being done it was being collected, but it wasn't being shared and professionally preserved anywhere else in Palm Beach County. Um, at that time, there were uh, city officials who were on board with the plan, and it didn't take much to get county officials on board with the plan. So Delray Beach just seemed to be the natural location, the natural uh, uh, spot where uh, this history could be preserved. The nonprofit was already collecting it. And so they already knew about the house that Solomon Spady built when he came to Delray. Uh, and the house just happened to be on the market. So, you know, timing and, wow. you know, things just fall into place. And yeah. Delray Beach just happened to be uh, hospitable for the establishment of a museum at the time. Yeah, and then that the his, I love the connection of Mr. Spady as an educator and the importance yes. of preserving history and education. I think that's really Absolutely. special and important. Um, and so, how can the community help um, the Spady's mission and in preserving and supporting and patronizing the establishment? So there are all kinds of ways ways the community community can help. 
But uh, let me just say this, and this is an important thing that the community can do. If ever you see uh, material that relates specifically to the African American, to any community, really, any community at all, it can be the white settlers, the black settlers, uh, the Hispanic settlers, the people from the Caribbean, any community in South Florida, if you see materials that are being discarded or destroyed that have to do with the history of our county, please grab them, put them in a box, call me on my phone and let me know where you are and I will come rescue them. This is like a rescue mission, right? Wow, because, yeah. because materials, when they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. So that's the main way the community can help. And of course, support us financially and support our programming. Um, that would be a big help to help us to continue to preserve uh, our precious history. We want it to last forever. Right. Forever. Right. That for me is like the, the most interesting part of this series. What's the story? Like, for example, um, next, next month, just a plug, we'll be learning about the Murakami Museum and Japanese uh -huh. garden. And yes. uh, in, you know, doing some research to invite guests to participate, I was like, wow, there were all these Japanese farmers who had settled there. And, yes. you know, Yamato Road, now that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, you know, and so learning about all these histories in South Florida, they're so important. Um, and being able to kind of just have those snapshots in time, because a lot of it yes. is lost. People yes. don't realize the importance of what they have. Exactly. And, um, it's only through preservation that that's achievable. Now, um, another way that you said supporting is for people to visit. What is going yes. on at the Spady right now? I know we're all kind of in flux with, um, you know, the health of the world. What do you guys have yes. going on? So we are uh, putting back up our local history exhibit. So we're kind of in flux right now. Um, but by July, which is our anniversary month, we will have back up our local history. So people can come in and see local photographs and read information about what was going on in the US at the time that our area was settled and what was going on in Palm Beach County at the time that our area was being settled. And again, um, this was during, it actually started before reconstruction, it started you know, um, during the Civil War, but really our area was settled in earnest during the Reconstruction period. So mm -hmm. when you come, you will be able to get a chance to uh, see that information. Also, when you come to the Spady, I offer you a walking tour as well, because remember early on I even said- me? Even you. <laughs> our nonprofit uh, helped to establish an historic district where the museum is located. So there are other historic buildings within walking distance of the museum. So we can we can hit the sidewalks and we could take a tour, a spin around the neighborhood, and I could talk to you so about some of the other historical structures that are in our neighborhood. And, and for then, some of us that are familiar with Delray Beach, really quick, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, where okay. where are you guys located in Delray Beach? Okay, so we are our address is 170 Northwest Fifth Avenue. So we are east of I-95, mm -hmm. west of Swinton Avenue, for those of okay. you who are familiar with Delray. Okay. Mm -hmm. In what, like I said, was traditionally called Colored Town, right? So we that are sounds, in the heart sounds of loaded. downtown Delray Beach. Yes. Yeah, I'm familiar with that area. It's a great spot. Good. And like you said, very walkable. A lot of things yes. going on right in that area. Absolutely. Um, so are you guys having uh, are you guys having the chance to pr present any online programs? If people can't visit you, if they're in another part of the country or just not able to get out of the house right now, how can people Absolutely. access you? Absolutely. What we have been doing with our exhibitions is we've been ha having uh, gallery talks that go along with them. And those we have been broadcasting uh, via Zoom. So people who uh, can't be here can join us via Zoom while we talk about what we have going on in the museum. And the same goes for classrooms. We have been doing, um, they're, we're calling them virtual tours, but um, it isn't as if I'm panning the camera around the gallery. 
um, showing images of what is up in the gallery and we talk about what's going on uh, in the gallery. I've, I've tried panning the camera. I've made a few people seasick. So I stopped <laughs> doing that. <laughs> Yeah, we've all been on that learning curve. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, that's yes. great. And then, so people, can people find out more on the website about these programs? Absolutely. www.spadymuseum.com. Oh, and, thank you. Yeah, there we go. Yes, and thank all the you. Contact info. And then uh, join us on social media. We're social as well. And our handle across the board is Spady Museum. So Twitter um linkedin facebook instagram find us at spady museum and you can and if you go to our website and join our mailing list we will keep you updated on things to come for like for instance july 27th that's our anniversary we'll be 20 years old and we're going to wow. have a nice large celebration in honor of our anniversary on in july so we will keep you posted on those details and we would love it if you would join us. All right, I, I just wrote that down too because I don't want to miss it. July 27th, it's the yes. Spady's, Spady's 20th anniversary. That's 20th remarkable. 20th anniversary. It's significant for a, a house museum such as ours, a small museum to exist for 20 years, anywhere really in the US. It's not, it hasn't been easy, especially with COVID. Um, and so we're very thrilled to be able to still be here preserving that history. That's the important part is preserving the history. Right. And um, really quick about history. Um, is the Spady planning any um, celebrations um, uh, or, or acknowledgments uh, around Juneteenth or any celebration like that? Yes, we are. So I'm not sure how much um, the audience is familiar with the emancipation of enslaved people in the U.S., uh, but Juneteenth right now is getting a lot of attention as um, the holiday that some people would like to see uh, recognized for uh, the emancipation in the U.S., but Florida's emancipation date is actually May 20th. So we are the black history sites across the state from Tallahassee to the Keys. We are advocating for May 20th as our Emancipation Day celebration because the people who were enslaved in North Florida in 1865 were freed on May 20th. Uh, Juneteenth is, is Galveston, Texas's Emancipation Day. Interesting. And for someone who's not particularly uh, familiar with this history, would that be May 20th before the June 19th or is that a later date? That's May 20th before June 19th. Yes. Oh, OK. So this part was liberated uh, before even Juneteenth was before happening Texas. in Texas. Yes. Very yes. interesting. Thank yes. you. I, I, I yeah, that's why I'm glad that you're here. We're working um, really hard to correct that information. Um, yeah. As we all know, once history is recorded incorrectly, it's really hard to go back and untangle that information and record it correctly. So we don't want it to. We don't want that to happen here. We are. We are really trying to get people to understand and realize that we should be celebrating May 20th. Right. We are Floridians. <laughs> right. And June right. 19th is for Texans. And you know, that happens with so many things like uh, the women's right to vote. It's yes. like it only applied to certain women. <laughs> there were a lot of women who were excluded. And yes. that's a whole other uh, you know, episode of What's the Story. But yes. you know, it's that same idea that we're acknowledging a slice of the pie when there was really, you got to zoom out and see the whole thing. Exactly. Exactly. I want to I want to get Suzanne Amira Enser Ryan. She uh, asks, "What are some educational programs for schools other than the current digital tours?" Thank you so much for your question. So I can't wait until we can gather again because when you can come to me, 
I can, uh, we have what we call a step on, step off tour, right? So if you come to the Spady Museum with your class on a bus, I will step on the bus, I will direct the driver, and I will take the students through a historical tour of the city. And I will give them worksheets. We will talk about architecture. We will talk about dates and times of establishment. And, um, and then when the tour is over, you just drop me off at the Spady Museum and go back to the school. That's one of our most popular programs. That's so cool. I've never heard of that before. And I would love to offer that to any school um, that would love to come. Now, is that a, pr a paid program or do you have a certain uh, like threshold of what, like a school that you can accept for free or how does that work a little bit? So yeah, in years past, this, when the school district had the money <laughs> for yep. buses for schools, it was covered. But because um, the money is not always available, uh, there is a small stipend for my two hours of time, but it is not as expensive as a full-blown tour. Nice. All right. Well, I hope people are able to take advantage of that. Um, let me see here. Um, so coming up, you started talking a little bit about what you guys are planning for the future. What's next? What's, you know, a year from now? What are you personally excited about? Well, I'm excited about growing our offerings, offering our programming to more people, to more students. Um, that, is, that is what we really have on our minds and we are strategic planning right now. Um, I'm not, I don't wanna give it away, but no, we are tell looking secrets. into, we are creating a, uh, a, a, a space for experiences. And so when you come to the museum, you will be able to select from several experiences that have been curated and that have been obviously historically fact-checked that you can engage in um, at the Spady Museum. And you will be able to do that in person or online. Wow. So we're working on that. It's very exciting. And awesome. I am so looking forward to that. Okay, okay, that's exciting. And just, yes. um, you've been with the Spady for how long now? <laughs> I started in 2001, just before the museum opened. So wow. I started in January 2001, when we started our MLK commemorative event. And I was immediately put in charge of the youth program. And I love working with the children because they are so honest and open. They have no problem telling you exactly what's on their mind. And I love that. Um, uh, so, yeah, I've been there for uh, 20 years, too. I think it's the longest I've ever been anywhere. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's, I mean, it's like your baby now, right? I mean, when you've done that is. long, something has yeah. to really be part of who you are at this point. Yes, it is. And what I'm thinking about now is um, who's going to step in when I step out and making sure that they have as much passion for, like I said, because it's preserving the history. That's the heart of our organization. That's the heartbeat. Everything else that we do is to share that history that we have. But preserving that history is important. So I'm looking for that right person who has that passion. Wow. And does preserving the history include now? Like, are you guys, you know, keeping your finger on the pulse of what's happening in like today's world and, and preserving yes. that kind of history too? Yes, because a lot of people are under the mistaken assumption that history is something that happened before yeah. now. And history is actually right now. It's right now. <laughs> and so, yes, everything that we are doing, we are preserving. So I, going back to an earlier comment that you said about how the community could help, um, you're saying, hey, if you've got a bit of history, you think you might have a bit of history, put it in a box, call me, 
What does that yes. look like? Does that look like a newspaper? Does that look like photographs? Does that look like a blueprint of something? What, what, what for the layperson, uh, what's important to you in, in the, the context of what the spady does? Okay. So it looks like something that if that item is gone forever, that bit of knowledge cannot be proven. So mm -hmm. if it's a newspaper, we can probably go to the newspaper and get an archive. So we're okay with that. But if it's an original photograph of someone, there may not be another picture of that person anywhere else. So that's critical. If it's a, um, a business document, there may not be copies of those documents anywhere else. So those kinds of things are critical. But here's what I want to, here's the point I want to make on that. When in doubt, save it, right? No matter what it is, allow the Spady Museum to go through the box and sort, right? right? If it was something that you were going to discard anyway, allow us to go through and discard it for you. And that way we can go through and, and sort through the materials. And this is not only materials. When you meet that 101 year old woman who worked at a, a store downtown, get your cell phone out, hit record and talk to her. Whatever she says to you, record it. Wow. Because the memories that she has, just like that photograph, that might be the only place you're going to get that information. So start with your own family. If you're lucky enough to have grandparents who are still alive, record their words. Let them talk and just record it. And just put it aside on, on your Dropbox or on your Google Drive, right? And hold on to it. Wow. Yeah, I never really thought about it. But yeah, it, it, I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments. But about... Um, Zora Neale Hurston's interview with one of uh -huh. the last uh, people who were yes. enslaved and captured yes. their manner of speaking. And yes. that always stuck with me as like exactly what you're saying. If this, yes. we don't have this one interview that she did, right. we would have lost that forever. And to think that nobody else thought, hey, maybe we should write this down is so exactly. Crazy. Exactly. Wasn't that a moving interview that she did with him? That was amazing. That yeah. really was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, and it's really being able to take that glimpse in time. That's really special. And I think it's also really what makes the Spady special and the work that you mm -hmm. guys are doing and contributing to the community so important. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to have time for one more question. Um, in moving forward, um, how are you guys working through fundraising development? Can people donate? Yes. Can people send yes. over in-kind donations? Can people reach yes. out to partner with you in presenting? Yes. There's that other side of support, yes. right? right? I'd love to give you a chance to kind of just chime in about that before our time is up. Okay. So early on in my career, I, I, I love continuing education and I love, I love going to training. I do that all the time. And early on in my career, I was in a seminar and the person told a story about working at a nonprofit and a lady walked through the front door and said she wanted to donate shoes. And the nonprofit was not in the business of shoes. They were doing something completely different. Uh, but they accepted the lady and they accepted the shoes and they did not know what to do with the shoes. So they had the shoes there. And then anytime someone came in, they would offer the shoes. And then a month later, the lady came back and she had something else that did not apply to their mission that she wanted to donate. And they accepted her donation and, you know, they did the, they did the best they could with it. And then the lady passed away and she had added them to her will. And she left them all this money and um, they had no idea she was even going to do it. But because they did not turn her away, she then took care of them 
when she passed away. So that stuck with me. And I am the kind of person, if you walk through my front door with a proposal or an idea or an offer, I'm going to take you up on it. Um, we are not a, a large organization. We are still a very small nonprofit organization in Delray Beach. And we appreciate uh, every single offer and every single contribution, no matter what it is, we appreciate it and we are thankful for it and we will do our best to grow it and use it to benefit our community and our children especially. So we are always open to ideas. Uh, we can't engage in everything, right? <laughs> if you wanna take me shark fishing, I don't know about that. <laughs> Although I will consider your proposal, <laughs> but yes, we are open to collaborations. We collaborate all the time. That's the name of the game. That's really how you expand what you do and what you can offer. And um, as you saw in that last slide, we are a staff of two. We have a very great 13 person uh, board of directors and we have some very uh, loyal volunteers, but we are a staff of two. Mm -hmm. So yes, if you, uh, any contribution you would like to make, we are, are well, we welcome it and we are grateful for it. Well said. Okay. And then one more time before we go, what's the website where people can find more information about the Spady? www.spadymuseum.com. Oh, fabulous. And I'm looking forward to my next visit. Thank you so much, Charlene, for joining us today and sharing about the Spady. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. And thank all of you for joining us tonight for the premiere of our new series, What's the Story? Join us next month for the next What's the Story with Wendy Lowe, Curator of Education at the Murakami Museum and Japanese Gardens. And next week, tune in to YouTube at 5 p.m. for a virtual concert by Black Sam. He's a Chicago-based rapper and songwriter who was raised here in South Florida. Until then, be well.